The mountains of Salt Lake City, Utah, framed the setting as Michael Jordan stepped on the floor in a Bulls uniform for the last time. In game six of the 1998 NBA Finals, striving once again to reach basketball's mountaintop. In Michael's mind, he knew when that series began, it was gonna be his final dance as an NBA player. The Jazz respected Jordan, and they had earned his respect by taking two games in the finals. In the early going of game six, an awkward play improved Utah's chances to even the series. Bob, I think Scotty Pippen pulled his back out on that dunk shot. There's an obvious truth. Pippen's back is bothering him. Pippen walked gingerly to the locker room. The Jazz took advantage and the early lead. Up top to Carmelo, take right, try to go left, get out. Comes back right side, strong move. Leap and lane, put it up, good! Count it, he's fouled! The ball there, delivered! They roar their approval at the Delta Center. Michael Jordan found himself in familiar territory with a challenge before him. Michael Jordan is going to have to carry the load. He was at the end of his career, but at the top of his game. They go to Jordan, low left, here we go. Follow away, base left, shot good! Out of the angle left, they go to Jordan. Michael, one bounce, fire away. Good out of it, a man possessed. Michael feels right now he can make every shot he takes. Jazz coach Jerry Sloan summoned his reserves, but it was Jordan who found an endless supply of strength. Michael Jordan sticks his third three-pointer of the half. Veterans John Stockton and Carl Malone talked it over and then demonstrated their uncanny knack for unspoken communication on the court. Strong! Strong, Carl Malone! Carl Malone carrying the load once again for the Utah Jazz! The second half began with an exchange of smiles by a couple of superstars, who then exchanged blows on the floor as the game's momentum shifted with nearly every shot. Stock it out of Carl, twist up, underhand scoop. Oh! In his last NBA Finals, Michael Jordan was focused on winning his sixth championship with the Bulls. But a hunger also burned deep within the Jazz, who were determined to win their first NBA title. Now back to the mailman, Carl Blaise left, 12 foot. Great drama has its subplots. Game five of the NBA Finals was no exception. The Jazz finally got a marquee performance from their star, Carl Malone. The mailman stole the show with 39 points. Meanwhile, Chicago's leading man, Michael Jordan, was having trouble hitting his marks. Even with Malone's big night, the director of Utah's cast, Jerry Sloan, made a script revision at intermission. He called on a seldom used veteran from Wichita State, a stand-in, Antoine Carr. Carr had five field goal attempts in the second half. He made them all. Without his performance in a supporting role, 
the NBA Finals would be history. Instead, the Jazz are back in Utah, back on their home stage, after refusing to let the curtain come down in Chicago. Game six, next. This is the NBA on NBC. The 1998 NBA Finals. Tonight, it's Game 6. The Chicago Bulls versus the Utah Jazz. A while ago at the Delta Center, the cast of characters began arriving for Game 6. Carl Malone, fresh off the great 39-point performance on Friday night. Michael Jordan held just 9 of 26 from the floor in Game 5. Antoine Carr, unexpected hero, helping to bring it back to Salt Lake, where John Stockton has family support. Dennis Rodman doesn't prefer Utah, at least it's close to Vegas. Brian Russell, good job defensively on Michael in Game 5. Scotty Pittman, whose MVP chances for the final may have been hurt by his 2 of 16 shooting on Friday night. And we welcome you back to Salt Lake City for Game 6. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. As we mentioned earlier, no team has ever come back from a 3-1 deficit to win the NBA Finals. That's what the Jazz are facing. But for the sake of context, six teams have recovered after being down 3-1 to win earlier rounds in the NBA playoffs, including three teams that eventually won the championship. And should the Jazz win tonight and force a Game 7, then it would be worth noting that very few teams have ever won a seventh game on the road in the finals. That's what Chicago would be facing. If anything, Utah would have a slight edge, it would seem, in that scenario. Now, if Chicago wants to take some encouragement from recent history, they know that game six has been very, very good to them. Of their five championships, only one, the first one, a five-game victory over the Lakers, was not clinched in the sixth game. There was the comeback from 15 points down in the fourth quarter against Portland in 92. John Paxson shot at Phoenix a year later. The Sonics were finished off in game six two years ago in Chicago, and then it was Steve Kerr's shot that finally put Utah away last spring. So, if the Bulls want to bring the hammer down, Game 6 is the time to do it as we welcome in Isaiah Thomas and Doug Collins. There is a Game 6, Doug, because Utah was able to make some subtle adjustments in Game 5. Well, Bob, they went away from their screen roll in the second half, and they went more to a post-up with Carl Malone. They put Antoine Carr in the game to give them another shooter so that when Pippen double-teamed, they could kick the ball out to the open man. They're going to get the good baseline cut. Pippen's going to get a double-team, and you're going to see Carr step right in out of the double team and hit the open jump shot. This caused problems for Chicago in the fourth quarter. Now what happens is you worry about the four shooters you have on the floor so you stay at home. This gives Malone room to operate in the post and go one on one against Rodman. He does, wheels in and scores easily. Now in the fourth quarter, it was Antoine Carl, Carr and Carl Malone. They had 16 of the 24 points. They're gonna need more of that today if they're gonna force a game seven. Bob? Well, you know, Doug, we might ask the question, what took Jerry Sloan so long to go to Antoine Carr? Prior to game five, he'd scored only four points through the first four games. Well, in talking to Jerry Sloan, one of the things he's worried about is Carl Malone guarding Tony Kukoc on the perimeter. And when he has Antoine Carr in the game, that has to occur. So even though he doesn't like that matchup, we're going to have to see a lot of it today if the Utah Jazz are going to win. Well, Tony Kukoc was brilliant in game five. 11 of 13, four three-pointers, 30 points. But Jordan and Pippen had their problems. Surprisingly, Bob, Jordan and Pippen struggling all night long. You see Jordan here never really could find his rhythm. Every time he shot the ball, it was just a little long. Pippen, known for his moves against Hornacek in the low post, never really went to his patented jump hook, forced turnaround jump shots all night. But Kukoc was marvelous, hitting 11 of 13 from the field. And you see the big three right there over Carl Malone. Now, it took Kukoc 11 field goals. Kukoc made 11 field goals on 42, on, on 13 shots. Pippen and Jordan took 42 field goals to combine for 11 field goal attempts. I think for the big three, they're going to have to play well tonight, and all of them going to have the big effort here, Bob. All right, and we'll get a big effort from Hannah Storm and the Showtime crew coming up following these messages. Game six, just around the corner from Salt Lake City. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Dallas Center for game number six of the NBA Finals. 
with the Chicago Bulls and our Utah Jazz. And now introducing the starting lineup for the Chicago Bulls. Wearing number seven, starting forward at 6'11 from Croatia, Tony Kukoc. Wearing number 33, starting forward at 6'7 from Central Arkansas, Scotty Pippen. Wearing number 13, the starting center at seven feet from New Mexico, Luke Longley. On the guard line, number nine, at 6'6 from Miami of Ohio, Ron Harper. And at guard, number 23, at 6'6 from North Carolina, Michael Jordan. The Bulls are coached by Phil Jackson. Midwest Division title. Unbelievable. Magic down the alley. Goes to three. Black Bay. Pick up the Magic. Black Bay. Oh, baby. Big mark everywhere. He did it. He did it. A new NBA assist king. God. Congratulations, Paul Malone. 1996-97 NBA Most Valuable Player. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing our Utah Jazz! Starting at forward number 32 at 6'9 from Louisiana Tech, the mailman, Kyle Malone! Starting forward number 3 at 6'7 from Long Beach State, Brian, Brian Russell! The starting center number 31 at 6'9 from Stanford, Adam Keith! On the guard line, number 12 at 6-1 from Gonzaga, John Stockton! And guard number 14 at 6-4 from Iowa State, Jeff Hornacek! The Jazz are coached by Jerry Sloan! And as always, pre-tip, we go to Ahmad Rashad. All right, thanks, Bob. The big news on the Bulls is the condition of Scottie Pippen. As was reported earlier in our pregame show, he did take an injection yesterday. He told me he hurt that back in Game 3 and Game 4, irritated a little bit more. Before the game today, he said he had everything he could have done, done to it. He had electrical stimulation, then he iced it, had ultrasound, had a massage, and then did a lot of stretching and told me that he is a little bit ginger, but nothing could keep him out of a game like this. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. One further Bulls note. I just spoke to Ron Harper. He is suffering the effects of the flu. He's very weak. He can't hold any food down. He will start. He will play. Just how long and how effective, he doesn't know. As for Howard Isley, I spoke to him. He's still suffering from vertigo. He's told me before the game he's a little busy. He's a little disoriented. He is going to play. Coach Sloan is just going to keep his eye on him. If he cannot go, John Stockton will take his minutes. Finally, I spoke to Carl Malone. Carl Malone told me he's going to the basket early tonight. He's going to be very aggressive early in the game. He wants to get Longley and Rodman into foul trouble. Not many outside shots at all. He finally went on to say, we're down 3-2. I know this sounds crazy. However, I like our position, and I'm confident we can win this series. Bob? Jim, thanks a lot. The officials are Dick Pavetta and Hugh Hollins, who worked game three, each of them, in Chicago, and Danny Crawford, who worked game two of the finals here at the Delta Center. The Bulls are just 4-4 four and four on the road in the playoffs. And in fact, have lost four of their last five road games against their toughest opponents, the Pacers and the Jazz. Jordan guarded by Russell. Hornacek will open on Pippen. He'll try and post Scotty on him. They go to it right away. Stockton comes over on the double team. Now back to Scotty, and they couldn't recover. Hornacek was left alone with him, and an easy two for Scotty. That's going to be the strategy here early. Try to go at Hornacek with Pippen. Michael will do a lot of the ball handling in the first period. Malone against Longley. Has to give it up, and Jordan is the only guy there. 
It looks like Scottie Pippen is laboring as he moves up and down the court. Ahmad Tolji is suffering from a bad back. Malone gets his first. 17 of 27 in game five as the whole Utah team shot better than 50%. Kukoc isn't, but this time he misfires. Hornacek lost it to Longley. Now Pippen has it, all along Kukoc. The one thing you don't want to do if you're Utah is get into a quick turnover battle here and give them easy points, especially Kukoc. Remember, he loves to get off early in quarters, and then he's a load the rest of the game. Hornacek from Stockton ties the game at four. That was a great screen by Carl Malone. Hornacek set Michael Jordan up beautifully and in a great entry pass by Stockton. Kukoc. You wonder if the Bulls went to Kukoc enough in game five. With Jordan and Pippen struggling, Kukoc was on fire but got only 13 shots. Stockton drives on Harper, ties the game. Stockton didn't take a single shot in the fourth quarter of game five. His assist totals have generally been high. His shooting percentage is high, but they'd like to see him get a few more shots up toward the rim. Hornacek is now 18 for 46 in the series. Jordan, there's his first field goal, and the Bulls take a 10-8 lead. If you take away Hornacek's 7 of 11. Hippen with the hook. Chicago by four. See, with Pippen hurting, I think Harper's going to have to step up big and supply the scoring load. Jordan for three. Got it. Jordan with five. And Chicago with a seven-point lead. Who coach? Underneath to an unguarded Harper, and the Bulls have scored nine unanswered points. Now they've buried themselves and find themselves in a big hole. Ostertag and Foster have given them nothing in this series. Good pass from Malone inside the Hornacek, who converts it. That's why their lack of scoring at center is why they were interested in Ronnie Sykley. Michael Jordan's illegal now, so the Bulls are all running around. And it's their second illegal defense, which will result in a technical foul shot being taken. It's Jordan to shoot it first. R against Kukoc. Jumper over him is good. So they've got to go to that matchup. There's no way Tony Kukoc can play him. He's too powerful down there. Got to shoot it quickly. Jordan Will with a hand in his face. Burrell skies for the rebound. Loose to the side, and eventually it's Utah who has it. Here's Hornacek. A pull-up three. Clock violation. Michael gave it up. They weren't even close to hosting a shot before 24 seconds. It's Malone. And it's Utah with the lead. Jordan. Rodman on the offensive glass. Wennington a good look. Wennington will hit the open jumper. Offensive rebounds were such a key here. When the Bulls won game two, they did not shoot well, but they got off 18 offensive rebounds. Isley bounces to Malone. Tough shot, but he cans it. Jordan over Russell. Tied at 22 with half a minute to play in the period. 
Alone against Wennington. Off balance, hit it, plus the foul. See, Bob, that's what I'm talking about, being aggressive, Isaiah. Taking the ball to the basket. Isley with the give and go. He doesn't settle for the jump shot. He puts the pressure on the defense, and it's a tough shot. And the same thing, he sees Winnington on him. He says, no way I can get this shot. He bodies up. Now an opportunity for a three-point play, which would give his team a three-point lead. Jordan, double team, forces up the quarter's final shot and misses it. A better start for Carl than for Michael. Once down by nine, Utah leads after one by three. And you're watching the NBA on NBC. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center, and early on, Scottie Pippen re-injured his back on that dunk shot that he had just at the beginning of the game. He has been in the locker room for the past five or six minutes trying to stretch that back out. He has both doctors in there. They're just trying to see what they can do to get him ready to play, and if anything else happens, I will be here to report it to you. Bob? Now you've got a team out there. Who's going to run the show? Who's going to be the guy to make sure that they run their offense and get the shots that they want? So this really hurts with Scottie Pippen being out of the lineup right now because you're at to rest Michael Jordan at some point. Rodman, good pass to Kukoc. Straight back cut by Kukoc. He set him up, then back cut, faked him off the screen. Great pass by Rodman. Great look by Kukoc. Carr trying to back in on Rodman. It's off Anderson's hands, but recovered by Isley. Two seconds to shoot. Are they calling a shot clock violation? Let's see. Dick Pavetta says yes. And they wave it off, though it appeared to me as if he had beaten it. See if the ball isn't out of his hand. One second. It's on the way, and they missed the call. That Scotty says he's telling the medical staff that he is not able to play. So that could be the end of it for Scotty tonight. Bob? Judd Bushler, who may get more minutes as a result, hits the shot from the side. Michael Jordan is also back in. Carr from Stockton. There you go. There you go. The 15-footer dead on is a better shot for him to take than the one off the glass. Jordan wheels inside around Anderson. And again, it's a two-point game. Michael has 10. Malone in traffic. Got his own and put it back in. That's that first offensive rebound that you talked about. Malone get it and got two points. Malone feels very confident against Lonely and Rodman right now. Jordan, daylight for three. 13 for Michael. Utah by one. If Pippen can't go the rest of this game, and if there is a game seven, inside it goes to Carr, and he hits the layup. How much more of the load could Jordan possibly carry? He played 45 minutes on Friday night. Here is Tony. To, to follow up on your point, Bob, this would be a very wearing game for Jordan. Jordan into the lane. Tough shot. He was fouled. He has also played more minutes than at any time since the 92 season when he was a much younger man. Michael springs free and takes the lob from Kukoc. Great roll off for Russell. Faked up and spent off him. Kukoc put it right there for the easy lay-in for Jordan. I'm noticing, Doug, every time Malone gets it on the low post now, they're coming to double team trying to keep Rodman out of foul trouble. Hornacek returns it to Malone. 
Now has it back in a crowd. And misses. Anderson flies in. Can't hit the tip. Malone, another try. And there it is for Utah. You see, Rodman didn't even try to contest that shot underneath. Don't want to get in foul trouble. So Malone's going to have his way down there. Just have to be careful and take his time and not draw offensive foul. Michael, head fake. He traveled. So Phil got the traveling call, but certainly not on the guy he wanted. And Steve Kerr just said to Pavetta, hey, call it on Malone down at the other end. I talked to Rodman after the last game, and he felt that Malone traveled a lot. That's why he was able to get away from him. Malone in the lane. Up and under against Rodman. He's getting such deep position right now in Rodman. The, the Utah Jazz are executing their offense to perfection. 18 for the mailman. Jordan for three. And there's his answer. I think that's his third three of the game, Bob. And going into this game, he, Kukoc, and Pippen were a combined four for 23 from three at the Delta Center in the first two games. It is his third tonight, and he has 19 points. Malone tries to answer, and can, and he has 20. A Jordan-Malone duel shaping up in game six. Who coach on the run? He's in double figures now with 10. Isaiah, how much is it going to take him to figure out that he's a left-handed player? And you can't let him come with a strong hand. you got to send him back to help. He's such a good dribbler, and he gives you that hitch move, and it draws you out of position, and he gets you every time with it. Who coach on Russell. Gives him some room, and Russell accepts the challenge and drills the jumper. Utah by two. You got to make Tony Kukoc play defense, and that's what Brian Russell did on that possession. It was Russell's first basket. Here's Michael. He's got 21. I'm watching Jordan, and he's in such a nice rhythm offensively. Everything is coming very easy to him. And right now, they have to be really careful because this looks like this could be a 40-point game from him. Tied at 43 shaping up as a higher scoring game than we've generally had in this series. It's Hornacek. See, Malone is getting the ball on the block where he wants it. The running splits, the running post-ups, and the Jazz are in a great rhythm right now. This is the guy they want, even more so than usual, and that's why. 15 of his 23 have come in this quarter. Stockton from Malone. Beautiful slip on that play. Stockton went across like he was going to set the screen on Longley. Michael relaxed just a moment. He slipped it. The give and go, Isaiah. That was a beautiful play. The bounce to Russell. Two big assists in the last couple of possessions for Malone. Three seconds. Michael to half court. From there. Almost. So Jordan had 23, matching his number in the first half, but missed his last four. Malone generally more accurate in the course of scoring 20. Utah by four. Ahmad Rashad back at the Delta Center where the Jazz lead the Bulls by four. Now the big story here in the first half has been the condition of Scottie Pippen's back. He has really been hurting. But during the halftime, the massage therapist gave him ice, massage. His back was having spasms. He got the spasms to stop, and Scottie Pippen is back out here on the floor. Whether or not he'll be able to play and play effectively, we'll find out. He is starting the second half. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thanks, Ahmad. Well, they thought that Scottie Pippen was going to be out of the game, so Jerry Sloan told his guys they were going to focus a lot more attention on Michael Jordan. All of that, of course, could change now. Very unhappy with the way they defended the screens. He wants them to get over the screens instead of running through them. Happy with everything offensively. Bob? All right, Jim, and here we go. Utah in possession as we start the third quarter. Malone right to work. Longley. Out to Scotty with five seconds to shoot. It'll be Kukoc. He has 12. Now Scotty's back out on the floor, but he's still moving very gingerly. 
working their magic. Michael feels the pressure, reverses for the lob. The fading jump shot has been terrific. And Carl Malone with the great hands in the second shot. Then the deep post position on Rodman in the layup. And he too with the fading jump shot. So both of these guys have been terrific for their individual teams today. It's been the best played game offensively we've had in the series. Russell for three. Malone in between two red shirts, pulls it down, and now he and Rodman all tangled up. And it's Malone's turn to laugh and taunt a bit. It's a great hustle play by Carl Malone. You're gonna see him, he just wants the basketball. Two Chicago Bulls, and he reaches in there with those powerful arms and just rips it away, the foul on Dennis Rodman. Jordan pulls up and connects. 25 for MJ. See, Jerry Sloan is very upset. Adam Keith did not show out on that screen. Michael came off there, not with the idea of passing. Responsibilities. This is Scotty out high, immediately returns it to Harper. A little jump hook is good. Just the presence of Pippen on the floor, you've got to be able to honor him, and he's a great post feeder. Here's Jordan. Off the back iron, Rodman trying to keep it alive. A tremendous hustling attempt, but Utah gets the ball. Now you're saying, why Chris Morris? Because he's a better offensive player, and he can play against a Tony Kukoc. Four seconds to shoot. Jordan missed it just before the shot clock sounds. Rodman battling like crazy, but can't quite hold on to it. Hornacek. He and Malone, Rodman and Malone, and Rodman just trips Malone up. They gotta call a flagrant here. They've got to call a flagrant. It's the third on Rodman. He and Carl Malone, regrettably, are scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to lower himself to that is anyone's guess. And Rodman apparently wants to start the wrestling now. I tell you what, I love what I'm seeing, the battle between these two guys. They're fighting, giving it everything they got. Both of them are trying to push and shove and gain position. Carl Malone gives them a little knock. But at the end of the play, what I like the most is Malone and Rodman both gave each other a pat on the, on the butt and said, hey, that's the way we play, that's the way we like to play. Here's Pippen. The bad back makes Hornacek's assignment on him a whole lot easier. Left alone, he doesn't take the three. Michael, fade away. See, if I'm Hornacek, I make Pippen make one of those shots. He's really rushing out to, to close out on him. He's got to show me he can shoot that ball before I'm too concerned with him. I got to be more worried about Michael Jordan. Post takes a quick bounce, the reverse spin, fakes Russell out and shoots a nice fadeaway tape. But I agree with you, Doug. I will make Scottie Pippen make one of those three-point shots before I leave Michael Jordan alone in the low post. Michael's pass to Scotty. And finally, the tip drops. Rodman gets credit for the basket, but it looked like Pippen was not able to show us the usual body control that he'd normally have to finish off that play. Usually he Pippen giving it his best, and that time it was good enough. As we said, with that back injury, that little jump hook in the middle is an easier shot for Pippen to shoot because he can extend with his, with his long reach and his arm length. Tied at 57. Hornacek had a good first half and hits this one. They're really making Michael work on a lot of splits. Hornacek is being very active. They know that Michael is the majority of the offense today, so they've got to keep him in motion. 15 for Hornacek. Now trying to guard Pippen. Scotty splits the defense, can't hit the bank, but Rodman with a second tip. That's the energy we talked about that the Bulls needed from Dennis Rodman. He gave them nothing in the first half. They come to double team with Russell, and as he goes up for the shot, that leaves Rodman clear for a clear tap in on the offensive glass. Now you watch Pippen trying to get up and down the court. He's really laboring and really working hard. Two coach Burrell and Kerr all in. There's Pippen heading back to the locker room again to try to stretch out that ailing back. Now screening for him. Morris fights through the screen. Michael takes him baseline. 
he really helped disrupt Malone's timing. Now Longley's back in the game. So we'll see if they're able to attack him either with Carr or Carl Malone. Back comes Utah looking for the lead. It's Chris Morris. Hornacek in the right place at the right time. You see early offense, they got the shot up and they didn't let Chicago get back and get set up. And so even though they missed it, they got a chance for a second shot opportunity. 17 for Hornacek. Easily his best game since game two. Michaels. Confronted by Carr after he blew by Morris. And Jordan will come to the line. One of two. Isley hands it to Carr. Last shot of the quarter here. Be big for Utah if they get a score. It will push it to five or six. They're on their feet at the Delta Center. Her on Isley. Around Keith's screen. Now he gets it back. And hits just before the buzzer. from pushing this to a game seven. Utah leads by five, getting a rare contribution, at least in this series, from Adam Keith. We're back after these words from your local station. You're watching the NBA on NBC. He's 10 of 24. At one time, he was nine of 15. That means he's just one of his last nine. He's played 34 of the 36 minutes so far after playing 45 of 48 on Friday night. Remember, in the fourth quarter Friday, he was just one of seven from the floor. You have to believe fatigue is an important factor now. I think with Michael Jordan, he's smart enough to rest on defense and try to conserve his energy for offense. Here he is on offense. And he'll be coming to the foul line just as the fourth quarter starts, but even those poundings. That's very tiring, tiresome. However, when you're running up and down the court, that's an aerobic exercise. Did Michael Jordan rest? He tries to rest the first couple minutes of the fourth quarter without Pippen. He's not going to get that rest. So we'll see what that does as the game wears on. Jordan against Anderson. He's still Michael Jordan. Whatever he has lost, through fatigue, through age, through whatever, has only brought him somewhat back to the field. He still leads the field. Rodman drills a 20-footer and gives it that go figure gesture. Now remember, in game two in here, he hit that same shot to tie the game. This one brings him to within one. Alone. Hands it back to Morris, who converts on the reverse. Carr from 20 feet. It spins out and Rodman is there. Brian Russell comes off Jerry Sloan's bench. As soon as he saw that Jordan was about to come back in, he calls on Russell, who probably will guard it. Kukoc to tie it. There was a great screen by Steve Kerr to open up Tony Kukoc, sacrificed his body, took on the bigger Malone, so Kukoc can nail the three. 15 for Tony. Utah's got to get some movement. Morris to a cutting Anderson who was bumped the basket. A count. It does. Russell is on him. He gets by him. Now Carr comes over and commits the foul. You see, they're so conscious of Michael Jordan coming off the screen. Michael is too good at finishing, though. You can't give him that baseline drive because he's going to get a foul. I say you got to push him back to the middle where you can help. Jordan is now 7 of 10. So they had it removed. Jordan with the jumper. And with 37 points, 
as Utah falls behind now for the first time since midway through the second quarter. See, he's headed for 40. I would start double team in Jordan every time he touched it. Stockton has a little daylight, and Utah has a three-point lead. Transition basketball again. The little screen by Malone, and he hits the open jump shot. Kukoc, Kerr, Pippen in the lane, connects on the turnaround, playing through clenched teeth. Malone. Rodman wins the rebound battle. That's a bad foul on Malone now because that's the fifth team foul. Now Rodman will shoot two free throws, but Stockton pushing the ball up the floor. 4.46 left. If he hits this, he can tie it. It's Hornacek. Malone. They'll bring it back out. The jumper by Carl. Utah back in front. Great patience. Offensive rebound, kick it out, and Hornacek got it right back to him. Malone has 29. Three seconds to shoot. Harper's not the guy they want to have do it, but he has to. And he beats the shot clock and cans a huge shot. Now you watch Harper as he takes this shot. Does he get it off in time? I don't know. That's a tough call. Well, That's you know what? Look. If they miss that call, it's a five-point swing in missed calls on shot clock situations. They took a Howard Isley three away wrongly in the first half. Stopped it on Harper. Out to MJ for three. It's short. Hornacek pegging it ahead to Russell. But Michael, with whatever gas is left in his tank, gets back to pick it off. Rodman, offensive foul on Dennis. And that's five. Now, Isaiah, that's what you're talking about. Jumping out off that screen and make Michael Jordan be a passer. Throw it to Rodman, who can't finish. Even Superman apparently gets tired. Malone, lots of room. Got it. That's their pet play. Malone goes over like he's going to the post and screams for Stockton. And he rolls out and hits the huge jump shot. Gets it right back from Pippen. Double pump, knocked away by Carr, and a foul. You gotta take the ball out of Jordan's hands right now and make Harper or Pippen beat you from the perimeter. Now you look at the job that Russell is doing against Jordan. He's keeping him out on the perimeter, not allowing him to come into the post. Or take the lead with a three of their own. Jordan. And a blocking foul. Stockton is down on the floor. Pippen into Jordan. Michael working on Russell. Jordan with 43. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead! Timeout, Utah, 5.2 seconds left. And here as he gives Russell the push. If they don't, we can't see that. The second straight Jordan year. They go out up in six. For a clean look. Stop it. The greatest Harper's thing about Jordan behind is the he screen. Has all the got a piece of it. So it comes off. The garden. If that's the, the last Chicago image Bulls. of Michael Jordan, won their six. How magnificent is it? NBA championship. I don't think and it's their the second worst, three. I mean, what he's done here in this fourth period. You see the 16 points. He got about a minute's rest and had to come back. Who won two out of three here? And two out of three in Chicago. Thank you, boy. Dave, thank you. Thank you,
Statistically, especially in terms of shooting percentage, Michael Jordan has had better games. But when you consider at age 35, the games he's played this year, the grinding minutes he's played, and Scottie Pippen being all but incapacitated tonight, and the fact that they're on the road, and the fact that the odds would shift to Utah's favor for a game seven, yes, MJ rose again. He no longer needs accomplishments to prove his case as the greatest player in NBA history. He just adds to it. And if this is the final chapter, what a way to close the book. I tell you, Bobby, you look at Scotty Pippen there. I remember all Scotty ever heard about was the migraine headache. But he couldn't play with pain. But today. They could not have won this game without him. Just his presence being out there. He made some big shots. He fed the post. He did all the little things for Chicago. And his numbers aren't going to show it. But Michael, once again, with the heroics. The unbelievable play. But his sidekick, Scotty Pippen, was there for him when he needed it. And I'm watching Michael Jordan hug his mother right there. Such a great player. Such a great person. Everything that this game is about the goodness of it he represents, and what he's done for the game of basketball and for this Chicago Bulls organization. All of us as former athletes are very thankful to 23 in red. Michael Jordan is as great a competitor as sports has ever seen. He also has an uncanny sense of theater. And as he makes his decision, he'll think about the fact that he could not ask for a better punctuation than this. He accepts a victory cigar from Jerry Reinsdorf to not only hit the winning basket, but have it be the last shot he takes this season, maybe the last he'll ever take in a Chicago Bulls uniform to win the game and the championship by a point. You know, Bob, it's interesting about Michael Jordan. He's a guy who has nothing to prove, but lives his life every day as, he, as if he has everything to prove. That's something about his greatness. He's, he's an unbelievable athlete. Let's talk to Phil Jackson. Once yes, again, I'm on. Yes, once again, another journey to the top of the mountain. How is this one different from the other five? Well, Ahmad, we had to fight our way through this one. This is a, a real struggle for us this year against overwhelming odds. Maybe not as talented as the last two years, but he had a great heart. Hearts of a champion, as Michael has said, and they won it. All right, you will celebrate tonight. Are you going to come back? Are you Gee, gonna... that's a great question, Ahmad. I'll dodge that one right now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Phil. All right, once again, it is now time for the 1998 NBA Finals Most Valuable Player Award. And once again, here's the Commissioner David Stern. Big surprise. Six championships, six MVPs. Michael Jordan, get over here. You grace us with your presence. You've contributed mightily to our league. And tonight you gave one of the singular performances in the history of the NBA Finals. Thank you and congratulations, 1998 NBA Finals MVP, Michael Jordan. award before but somehow I have the feeling that this one is more special than all of them well let me say hello to my wife and my kids at home because they desperately wanted to come I didn't want them to come here today because I wanted to focus on the game but I wish they were here to help me celebrate I know they're there cheering and I can't wait to get home but to the Utah fans you guys are a tough bunch to play in front of you guys came out with a lot of loyalty and respect for your team you made it really tough for us uh, we really, after losing game five in Chicago, a couple of us dread coming back to Utah because we had to deal with the fans because of the energy that they bring to the game. But we had no choice, so we had to come in and play our best, and you guys made it a very competitive finals, and you know it's very worthy to win this, and I, I think of all the championships that we've won, this is the toughest. It doesn't get any easier, but at the beginning of the season, this was the goal that you set out for. How wonderful was it to make this into a reality? 
Well, I tell you, when you start the season, I'm pretty sure every team next year is going to start with the focus of finishing and winning their last game. We started with that focus. It was a long road, a lot of different tasks and little bumps in the road, but somehow we made it. And I think everybody who looks at this year is going to have some lot of, a lot of gratification and understanding and a lot of dedication. There were a lot of times during the course of the season that people doubted the Chicago Bulls, doubted that you'd be able to come back and pull this off. Even during this, uh, this finals series here, people doubted you. How did you guys stay so confident? Well, I mean, this team is, is, is one. Our leadership is strong. Our leadership is, is very positive, very determined, and it filters down to the rest of the players. And we never let anybody gave, give up. You know, we, we believed in it, and, and we kept coming for it. All right, I've asked everybody if they're all going to come around to try to do this again one more time. I would love for that to happen. I think that's something that's got to have to be determined over the summer. All right. Congratulations, Michael. Congratulations, Chicago Bulls. Let's go over to Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much, Ahmad. Tonight, one of the truly gutty performances in the finals by Scotty Pippen. Scotty, how badly were you hurt? during this game? I was hurting pretty bad, you know, to start the game off. I was able to get a dunk when I came down. The pain just sort of built from that point, and every time I tried to run, I was getting spasms, but I knew I wanted to come back and try to give a better performance in the second half, so I just tried to take advantage of that little bit of time before the half and, you know, see what I can do. And I came out the second half, and Chip wanted to give me a little treatment, and I took the treatment, and I told him from there I was going to just try to gut it out. You know, I felt like that my presence out on the floor would mean more than just sitting in the locker room. Now, Scotty, you were in tears after the game. Was this your most difficult championship, and why the tears this time? Is it maybe because you feel it's ending? Well, I think they all have brought tears to my eyes, but this one was so difficult because, you know, I felt like to some degree without me being out on the court that I was kind of letting the team down, and they understood, but, you know, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be a present. I wanted to play a major role in the game, but the other guys came off the bench, held us in there the first, first half, especially Michael. He had a heck of a game, and, you know, everything else is history. Now, you hold the key here to these teams returning. Michael said, if you come back, he'll come back and fill and so forth. What are your thoughts? Will you come back? Would you take a one-year deal? What will go through your thought process in making this determination? Well, Jim, right, right now, I just have to, you know, let everything soak, soak in. You know, there's a lot of opportunities out there for me, and, you know, I have to look more down the road in my future, but, you know, I don't know. You know, after all this is soaks in and get back and get my back back on track uh, you know you never know is there a twins of sadness with you a little melancholy feeling right now that it may be ending excuse me are you feeling a little sad right now that this could be coming to a close no not not really you know we're gonna enjoy this and you know as long as we, we, we can you know uh, as a player right now I don't feel like it's over you know we got a lot of celebration to do and I'm not really looking forward to next season right now final thought the Utah Jazz and Carl Malone a spectacular effort what would your thoughts be toward them it was great. You know, Carl and uh, John, you know, there are some gutty performers. Uh, what is Hornet Sack, Russell, who's grown and matured and, you know, had a fabulous series. Uh, you know, we take our hats off to this team. The fans here have really came out and made us work hard. Uh, you know, it was, it was a great series. You know, it was an even better series than last series, even though, it, you know, both series in at six games, uh, this, this, this topped it all. Can you begin to explain the disappointment you must be feeling right here at the end? Well, Without a doubt, I'm disappointed. Uh, we fought hard. God did the best, uh, did a good job. And, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a tough loss for us. You know, got to be a professional, give them credit for it. They won the ball game. Tell us about the last play and Michael Jordan. He came over and stripped you of the ball. Well, I don't know. You, maybe you got the ball. That's fine. That's part of it. Carl, you, you've been a, a truly great player, and you come so close now to the championship. Will you return? Will you keep trying to get to the top of this mountain? Well, I'm not a quitter. I just got to get away for a while and think about things. But, you know, it's a tough one. It's a tough loss. Give them credit. They won. You know, what else can you say? Do you feel as though this was Michael Jordan's last game? I don't know. I don't know if it was Michael's last game or not. Scotty Pippen in tears over here. You're not sure about Michael Jordan. What did Scotty just say to you? Oh, no, he just told me good game. Carl, you're a class act. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you.